Hey iOS devs, today we're going to be getting started with AWS Amplify Storage. The storage category allows you to store files like text files, audio files, video, images, you name it. If it's supported by AWS S3 buckets, then you can store it. And that's exactly what we're going to be using under the hood, AWS S3. So you can update the permissions, you could choose your access level, things like that. And AWS Amplify Storage allows you to do all that stuff automatically. So it's really great. We're going to actually be using the AWS CLI to get our categories all set up and pushed to the cloud. Then we're going to jump into our iOS project and we're going to implement and upload a file. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. So as you can see here, I'm starting off at the root directory of my project. And if I do LS, you can actually see our, our project file. So since we're at the root directory of our iOS project, we can run amplify init. Now, once we run amplify init, it's going to ask us a series of questions that's going to allow us to configure our Amplify project. It's going to create a Amplify project locally, and it will also create an Amplify project in the cloud in AWS. So I'm going to go ahead and press enter to enter in all the default values. As you can see, it's asking for a name for the project. So I'll go ahead and hit enter. It's going to ask for a, uh, an environment, which I'm going to choose to dev. And it's also going to ask for the type of editor. We won't be touching this today, so it doesn't matter what you pick, but I'll choose VS Code. Now, this part is very important. Make sure that you choose the correct platform. In our case, it's going to be iOS. Lastly, it's going to ask us if we want to use a, an AWS profile. I'm going to say yes, and I'll choose the default profile. All right, it looks like our project was initialized successfully. So if I clear the screen and I do LS, we should actually see that a couple of different files and folders have been added. So we now have an Amplify folder and we have two configuration files. So our Amplify project has been created locally and in the cloud, which is great. And now what we need to do is specify which category we want to add. In this case, we're going to be adding storage. So let's run Amplify Add Storage. So once again, once we run Amplify Add Storage, we're going to be prompted with a couple of different questions and we're going to be using content. And once again, I'm going to be putting in the default value for every prompt. So I'll just go ahead and hit enter because we do need the auth category in order to use Amplify storage. So it will actually use Amplify auth in order to get us all set up with all the proper configurations. So let's go ahead and add auth and I'm going to choose default configuration. I'll specify username because we won't be doing anything with auth today. And there's no advanced settings that I want to set up. So now it's asking us to name our resource. Once again, default value, uh, provide a bucket name, default value. And who would we like to access this? Well, since we're not going to actually be signing in a user today, I'm going to go ahead and select auth and guest users. This will allow us to read, write, and um, delete as a guest user without forcing our user on the app to log in. So go ahead and choose auth and guest users. And I'll go ahead and press A to specify that I want to allow create, read, and delete as an authenticated user. And the same thing for guest users. I'm not going to be adding a Lambda trigger, so I'll hit no. And as we can see, we're all configured with Amplify Storage. So now let's go ahead and do Amplify Push so we can send our configuration to the back end. So whenever you run Amplify Push, it's going to give you a status update of what's actually going to happen. Now, remember that Amplify Storage does require Amplify Auth. So you'll actually notice that we have two categories right here, Auth and Storage. They'll have resource names. And we're since this is the first time that we're doing Amplify Push, we're going to be doing the create operation on both of them. And as you can see under the hood, we're actually using AWS CloudFormation to set up all of these um, configurations. So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes for continue. And there we go. All of our resources have been pushed up to the cloud. So now if we go ahead and clear this all out, what we need to do is we need to actually import the different libraries that into our project. So we're going to be using CocoaPods to install the dependencies into our project. So let's go ahead and run pod init. Now that we have our pod file, let's go ahead and open it up with our favorite editor. And what we're going to want to do here is make sure that we specify which platform we're going to be running on. In our case, it's going to be iOS. 
and we also need to specify which iOS version we're going to be using. I'm going to be using iOS 14, but feel free to specify whatever you like as long as it's above iOS 11. Next, let's go ahead and specify which pods we're going to be using. So as you can see here, we're going to be adding our Amplify pod, and then we're going to be using two different plugins. The first plugin is going to be the AWS S3 storage plugin, and then the second one is our AWS Cognito auth plugin. So once again, we do need auth, we do need to use Cognito in order to access and use AWS S3. So that's why we have those two different plugins. Let's go ahead and save our file and then run pod repo update. So we're gonna run pod install repo update and that's going to install our dependencies for AWS S3 as well as AWS Cognito. And there we go, we're all set up and ready to go. So now what we can do is we can open our XC workspace. So as you can see, I'm in a Swift UI project and we already have a little bit of our UI set up. Now we're gonna get back to this, but let's head over to our app object, which is the starting point for our app. If you're on a UI kit project or if you're using just iOS 13 with Swift UI, then this is gonna be essentially your app delegate and everything that we run here would be essentially added to your did finish launching with options. So the very first thing that we need to do is import our dependencies, which are Amplify and Amplify plugins. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and add in a function where we can configure all the different plugins and amplify itself in one function. So in our configure amplify function, as you can see, I have a do catch block set up. And the reason for that is because the configuration methods on amplify are throwing methods. So we want to make sure that we're calling try on each of those and handling the errors as they as they come up. And what I'm doing here is in the catch statement, I'm just simply printing out could not configure amplify. And I'm including the error in the print statement. And if we do everything successfully, then we'll have this print statement. So let's go ahead and add in the different plugins and configure amplify and see what happens. So remember, once again, that storage does require AWS Cognito to be added, the auth, pl the auth plugin. So we're adding that plugin right here, and then we're adding in the AWS S3 storage plugin as well. Then lastly, we'll just simply call amplify.configure. So let's make sure we call the configure amplify function inside of our init method. And once again, if you're using UI kit, this this function call is gonna go in your did finish launching with options method. So let's go ahead and run the app and let's see what happens. So as you can see here, we got an error. And the reason for that is because we need to make sure that the configuration files are added into our project. So let's go ahead and add them in now. I'm gonna go up to our main folder that has our source code files. I'm going to add files to our project. And then I'm gonna make sure that I select our project and add in those configuration files. So we have the amplify configuration.json file and the AWS configuration.json file. So I'll just go ahead and command click both of those, make sure that they're both selected and add them to my project. Now, if I go ahead and click on them, I can see that we have the, um, the amplify configuration file right here, which is setting up the auth category and the storage category as well as the AWS configuration file that's setting up the user pool as well as the S3 transfer utility. So let's go ahead and run the app again and let's see what happens now. And as we can see, we successfully configured Amplify. So that's great and now we need to just simply make sure that our button is going to try to upload a file whenever we tap on it. So let's go ahead and head back over to the content view and now we can import Amplify and start and create a new function that's going to handle the upload. So as we can see here, I imported Amplify and I now have an upload file function and I'm simply calling amplify.storage.uploadData. So what we need to do in order to use this method is specify a key. This is gonna be essentially whatever you call your file when it's stored inside of a bucket 
and then we need to pass in some type of data. We're gonna actually be storing text as our data. It's just gonna be a simple string that we're gonna create as a text file that we're gonna be uploading. And then we have this result listener, which is going to allow us to switch based off of the different results that may come back. So let's go ahead, create a key, pass in some data, and then start implementing our result listener. So here we have our file key, which I'm just going to call it testfile.txt. Then we have some file contents. This is essentially what would be inside of our file, and we convert that file, those file contents into data. Then what we do is we simply pass in that file key under the key parameter and the file data under the data parameter. Our, our result listener is going to provide us with a result which we can switch based off of. And if for whatever reason we're unable to upload the data, we'll get a failure which is going to give us a storage error. And we'll just simply print out that error right here. If we have a success, if we're able to successfully upload that file, then we'll get success. We'll also get the key back that was uploaded and we'll go ahead and print out that key. Now. Last thing that I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I'm updating our file status, which is going to allow us to display some text to the user on our screen in our UI. So let's go ahead and update that now. All right, so as you can see, we're returning to the main thread because this function is an asynchronous task. So we wanna make sure that we return to the main thread whenever we're updating our UI and our file status is just simply going to be updated to file upload it if we did it successfully. But if we weren't able to upload the file, then once again, we're going to return to the main thread and we're gonna update the file status to say failed to upload and that's going to update our text right here. The very last thing that we need to do is make sure that we're calling the upload file function in our action of our button. So let's go ahead and add that. And we can go ahead and run the app and see what happens. So here we go. Once again, we get successfully configured Amplify right here. And when we return back to our simulator, we hit upload and we get file with key was uploaded and if we take a look at our UI, we can see that file uploaded is right there as well. So that's pretty much how you upload a file to storage. So we were able to create a file, we sent it to our S3 bucket, and if we wanted to actually see that file, we can actually go to S3. So let's head back over to our console. So back over in our terminal, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run amplify console. So as you can see, when you run the Amplify console command, it opens up your default browser and it gives you um, some information and status updates based off of everything that's happened in your project with timestamps. So what we're interested in is the file storage. So if we go ahead and click file storage, we can actually see that we have our, our S3 bucket and the information about that bucket as well. And if we want to take a look at the file, we can say view, we can tap view in S3. This is going to open up the S3 dashboard where we're going to be able to see all of our public files and we can see that the test file is right here. So if we go ahead and open it up and we hit download, we should be able to get access to that file and we'll see that this is my dummy file. So that's all you need to do in order to upload a file. And as you can see, we were able to do it very quickly with just a couple of lines of code thanks to Amplify Storage. So if you wanna see how to continue on with Amplify Storage, do things like downloading, then make sure you check out the rest of our videos. And if you have any questions about Amplify Storage or AWS Amplify in general, make sure you uh, check out our Discord channel and you can get help from the team there. So that's gonna be it for today. Now go out there and keep coding passionately.